Hey everybody, James Hudson here with the Board Game Spotlight and Druid City Games and I am going to be showing you guys Elo Darkness today. This is a MOBA inspired board game. I'll be swapping back and forth to show you guys overhead and then I'll talk to you a little bit too. But if you like League of Legends or Dota, any of those games where you know the minions are pushing and you are uh, essentially trying to get your heroes to take down the base of the other team, you're going to really like this game. Highly, highly tactical, highly, uh, uh, very, very tactical in the way that you're going to go back and forth uh, until each player has exhausted all of their options in each of the lanes. Uh, deck building, you're going to be able to, like, uh, we're going to have the starter decks that they gave us, and because there's still a lot of strategy here, but let me swap to this and let you guys see there is a huge, enormous pile, and also the campaign is unlocking tons of cards. Uh, I think there's 180 that come in the base, and I think that was the, the number that I saw. And then there's also this many action cards. Uh, so, tons of options as far as customizing your deck and really getting in there on your heroes. So, each team is going to start with five heroes. You're going to have a red laner, a blue laner, a yellow laner. I think these are, I want to say, marksman, mage, and fighter. And then you have two gankers. Ganker is a very uh, uh, MOBA... Uh, terminology right this is the people that are going to come out they're like supporters they're going to come out of the jungle if you're a league of legends fan uh, i can't jungle for crap i just play mid or support those are the two things that i can do so if you find me it's alabama roll tide on uh league of legends look me up send me a friend request let's let's play a game together but so you've got the three main heroes and you got the two jungle or gankers and so they're going to lend support in the one of the three lanes you are trying to get your pawn to the uh the other opponent's home base. If you do that, you win the game. It only takes one of any of the lanes. But there's going to be this push and pull effect, right? You're going to be going back and forth trying to really get uh, those done. So what's going to happen also is if you get past certain places, you're going to destroy the towers. And then that just makes it easier to get because you don't stop at those spots anymore. Um, so let's talk about the game a little bit. So you've got five heroes that have five action cards. And then you have uh, 15 action cards. And so your deck is made up of 40 cards. On each hand, you're going to draw seven. Each round, you're going to have seven. You're going to start with seven cards. And then you're going to have some options from there. You have a, There's four different phases. Uh, and we'll talk about those a little bit. You also can ex level up your experience uh, for each hero that you'll see over here with these tokens. And uh, level two gives you a plus one. Level three gives you a plus two on the influence when you're fighting. And there's a challenge on those lanes. Uh, they also can unlock certain action cards uh, or ability cards. So these ability like upgrade items, you only have three slots. So you'll have to kind of choose. But like you can see here, let me see if I can get you a nice shot of this on camera. This uh, drone, what it does is, is and this is for the red laner. This is for the marksman. You can pay up to three gold to gain one influence for each goal you spend. So it costs a buck to put this down here. But then during your action or during your combat challenge phase, you can go to that. So it's again, it's going to be very, very tactical the way that you're going to choose the things in even in the order in which you do those. So let's look at this. So here's an example round. I think that's going to be the easiest way to show you guys what's going on. So let's say we're in the farm phase. So the farming phase is the each card has this set of symbols. Uh, there's three different options. There is some cards that'll be worth two gold, like this gank green card that you see there. It's two gold. Um, or you have a either or option, which is a card or a money, or then you can just get two cards. Now the cards are very useful because you're going to be you're going to need those options when you're in that tactical battle back and forth. But you also can use the money to uh, pay for these item cards and to activate those. So it's going to be a, a little bit of push and pull. There's also a couple of things that are interesting about the game as far as very, again, very League of Legends, uh, MOBA inspired, right? You can retreat from a lane, which means you'll actually give up ground to your opponent. But then this lane is now open, or it can't be challenged again in this round. And so both players would be able to take their... Um, in this case, let's say it was the yellow lane. The yellow lane will now, those characters will drop back and become support. So you can play those. There will be no challenge, so you, you're all, maybe you're also in a bad position and you don't have a good yellow set of cards in your hand. You might do this, drop that back so that you can't, so your uh, yellow hero doesn't get killed because heroes can get killed 
they all, not only get exhausted, but they get removed from the board for a round. And when they come back, they come back exhausted. And then the next round, it's like a two round situation, just like you know when you get when you get killed in League of Legends, you know, it puts you way behind. So you're going to have these this farm phase, and you're going to make your decisions on when you want to turn these in. So you could discard. Let's say I've got two of the white gank cards. So this hero, the white gank here, I might discard that, and I would draw two cards into my hand. And then also, when you discard a card, you level up that hero's experience. And you can, it doesn't matter if I would have discarded two or three, uh, you still only gain one experience from that action. So then, now I've got one less card, uh, but I actually drew two because of her power uh, of the farm. So I might say, all right, that's all I want to do. The other player would do the same. They would get their hands ready. Then you go uh, to the prep phase, where you're going to play a red card and a blue card, uh, for that lane. Now, I've got a blue hero and a red hero, so I could play those. Uh, then you could also play these laner action cards. So like this particular card says peeling. Let's get the glare off of there for you. Draw a card. The opponent must discard one card from their hand. So, and then it also right here you'll see the uh, influence. That's one. Oh, I have a huge uh, five Plus five. That's a, that. That is enormous. Called play safe. You can't advance or kill any hero during this challenge. From the fourth turn on, play safe gains three influence. So, you know, there's going to be some real tactical decisions you want to make there. But for the for the sake of uh, showing how this works, you would, everybody would play the card down that they want here, right? And then the other player would do the same. Uh, let's see. We got a blue and we've got a red. So then there would be the reveal phase. So we'd flip those over and we would see what we have going on. Now, whichever player has initiative, and it goes back and forth between each round, you can see this over here. We have a token. It is the blue player and the red player, uh, or orange. And so, you know, you can flip that at the beginning of the game to see who will have initiative and be the first player. So it's blue in this case. Well, I'm gonna make it orange just because I'm sitting on the orange side. And so when it would go to the next round, you would flip this over, and that, that, the other player would have the initiative. The game plays over 10 rounds. And there's also some monsters that come into effect. And I, I can explain those later. But the game is played in 10 rounds if someone hasn't won already. So there is a cap on how long it goes. Okay, so let's look at this fight. We're, let's just say that I'm the orange player and I'm in good position here with red. So I say I want to challenge red first. So red, we're going to look at that. Because remember, I, for the sake of the example, we retreated from yellow. So yellow will not be challenged this, this, this round. Uh, but yellow has dropped into each player's support roles, and I'll show you how that works. So right out of the gate, I see that this player has a two influence, and I have a one. Now this the the card ability goes in the order of um, uh, initiative. So I have flaming tears. Uh, flaming tears says gain one influence for each marksman card in your discard pile. So first round of the game, I probably wouldn't have chose to play that, but We'll just say that that's what we did. Also, something to remember uh, to know is you have cards that are ultimates. You see that little box right there. Let me get it so you can see it. It says ultimate. There are other red cards that are not ultimate. And so you can do a combo effort. I don't have another red card in my hand currently. But if I did, I, you could combo. Well, here's my gank cards actually have that. So check that out. So her abilities there show one has an ultimate, one doesn't. So you can chain those. So if this was an ultimate, pretend this is a red card, I could come back later and play this ability on top of it uh, as a chain. Very powerful, very tactical. Uh, uh, my opponent here, oh, so I gained one influence. I didn't be, I wasn't able to do that. Winds of Madness. So I'm currently already down to the blue player, two to one. Uh, Winds of Madness. In order to play a gank card during this challenge, the opponent must discard one card from their hand. When the opponent activates a chain during this challenge, you draw a card. So this is a really, really good card. So now we've revealed, we've taken the actions, now I get my action. So what I want to do, what do I want to do? So I only have laner cards. Uh, I could bring in gank. Uh, now I'm going to allow the other player to gain a card though, which is not going to be helpful. Mm. Oh, let's do this. So let's just do it for the sake of showing you guys this. Uh, I'm going to bring in uh, this uh, jungle, and her ability says, if the first card on uh, on top of your discard pile... Now, this happens a lot in this game, so the order in which you put things on the discard pile is very important. 
if the first card on top of your discard pile is a hero, you gain plus two influence. So now I have three to their two. So now it would be the other player's turn. So let's look at what they've got. They have got a whole lot of action cards and a yellow plus one. Oh, very nice. So because we were showing the example of the yellow lane being uh, a retreat line, line, the yellow players have dropped back to support. So you can be played just like I play the normal support card here. So let's just say for the sake of argument that they're going to do this. They're going to play the Perseo, the fighter. His, his ability is very simple. It is gain one gold, but he's worth two influence. So boom, they're going to gain gold. And now they have four. Now it's four to three. Now it comes back to me. All right, what do I want to do? I do have another gank card. Something to remember, though, uh, is I could still play this ultimate. Uh, whenever in this particular lane, whoever gets used becomes exhausted. So I won't be able to use white when we do the blue lane. So you're going to want to really think through that. Uh, so her ability here is to search your discard pile for a hero card associated to this lane and put it in any immediately. Uh, I don't really think that's going to be super helpful. Hmm. I mean, I could... Nah, that nah, won't work. Let's see. I think what we'll do, because we are currently losing three to four, we can either just go ahead and pass, because you can always pass. Uh, we don't currently have any items because we didn't have any gold yet. You can do it on... Uh, one of the things is called Get Greedy. What Get Greedy does is you would get plus one influence, but it allows the opponent to draw a card, and also you become threatened. And so... Um, what can happen is if you get a bigger gap of plus one, it actually kills your hero. So you get that short-term advantage, but you put a lot of stuff back. So you kind of really want to know some information. You might have a card that let you look through your opponent's hand. You want to know that they can't come back with a big card and lay down the law because it could really, really hurt. Again, for the sake of argument, let's say we do get greedy. Now we're tied. So passes back to the blue player, and we see what they can do. So they may want to win. So these action cards are only lander cards. They would have been put down earlier. So they're not really useful for the tactical back and forth. But they could bring out the green jungler. That would give them a plus one. And the, uh, the jungler is uh, Margi. Draw three cards from the opponent's deck. Choose and discard one of these cards and put the rest on top. So you could kind of filter their cards and uh, get rid of a really powerful card. So, oh, also, something to note, only one player per challenge can get greedy. So now they can't also get greedy as well. So I, I, I jumped on that first. Um, You know, it's four. You know what? They're going to do it. They're going to do this, and they're going to take the lead. And so they're going to take the top three cards here. One, two, three. They're going to find which one looks most powerful. Oh, yep, that hero card. And then they can put these back in any order they want. So they'll do that. And then that action is done. So now it's five to four. And play passes back to the orange player. Um, they could do it again. They could they could bring out their green jungle. Uh, in this case, when you're really going this hard in one lane, you're really pretty much throwing it up to the wind on what you've played on your other card because you just don't have a lot of options left for the other lane. Um, so actually, because yellow, I haven't used yellow here, so have two options. I could go for the green jungle that is theft. It's a plus one influence and allow me to steal a gold from the opponent's pool, which they do have a gold, so, but yeah. Or I could play my yellow character that has a two influence. Uh, and because I went greedy, I really don't want to lose this particular time. That would hurt really bad because you still don't know what they have in their hand. Maybe they made their holding back a really powerful card. Um, uh, Petrifying Touch. When you play a gank card on this lane, the opponent must discard one hero card from his hand or spend two gold from their pool. If they cannot do any of these actions, they reveal their hand. <whistles> Boom. So you know what? Let's do that. We're going to go here. So now we've got a total of two, four, six. Six to their five. Um, hmm. I've already played a gank on this one, so they've got to discard a hero card from their hand or two gold. They don't have two gold, and they don't have uh, a hero card. So I would get to see their hand. Boom, I can see they have no options, but at this point they don't care because they don't have any options. That will, you know, They will pass, I will pass, I will win this lane. So we will move up. Boom. 
Now, every hero that participated in this battle will gain one uh, experience. So this, this is really good for me over here. I'm going to go up one. Yellow's going to move up one. And red's also going to move up one. Very, very nice. Now these get cleared. And they go to my discard. Same for the other player. Uh, we will also flip over. We were here and exhausted and exhausted. And same for here. They were exhausted and exhausted and exhausted, right? Did I play a green over there? I think I did. Okay, so now we would go to the blue. Uh, still on me. All right, so I've got Light of Rebirth. As you can tell, the art on this game is really good. If you like high fantasy, this type of art, the art's great. Uh, remember, I have a prototype here, so you've got like a, uh, a thrown together board. You've got cards that are that don't have full art on them yet. So don't put too much onto that. Go to the Kickstarter and check out the, the, the campaign. So here I've got Light of Rebirth. You can pay two gold in order to choose a hero card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. I don't have any money. Dang, that would have been really nice. That's a good late card. Uh, this guy is Data Transfer. Draw a card. The opponent must discard one card from their hand. So yeah, options, always good. Oh, and they got a... Mm-hmm. A hero card. So draw a card, the opponent must discard one from their hand. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna discard, you know what, I'm gonna discard this place safe. Okay, now back to me. So do I have anything that I wanna play here? So I can jump on the get greedy if I wanna get that first. I can't play, the only thing I got, I've got this green gank card. But I might wanna see what they do first. And it takes consecutive passes to end the challenge. So. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and jump on the gank right away. I'm going to steal that gold because that's the theft card. And now I've got a two. Two to two. So I'm not losing. All right. Play passes over here. Now, this player, uh, the blue player, uh, hasn't used their white character, but they also don't have any white character support cards. So not very good. So what they're going to do is they're going to jump on the get greedy. Boom. So now they're up three to two. That allows this player to draw a card, and now they're also threatened. So if I could put together a, and, and I know what they have, because I saw their cards from the previous lane. So if I could put together something to get in the gap, I, I could, mm, but you know what? I don't, I don't have anything. This, I'm out, this player's exhausted. I've already used it. I did everything that I could there, and these are laner cards, so they're not gonna help me. Ah, I can't do anything. Okay, so I'm just going to lose this lane, three to two. So, because I spent all I had earlier just really going after it. So, all right, we're going to lose here. So that's going to happen. Those get discarded. This player's blue player is going to gain an experience. And they are going to move toward my home base, one space. So this is going to come back and go to discard. So now that is the end of the challenge phases and we would draw back up to seven cards and then we would start another round and you would go through the farming again. So, you know what, let's do that one more time because, um, you know, I just really enjoy this game. I just, I even, even play pretend playing is fun for me. I think they're also, um, I think they're also working on some, um, solo rules. And then there's also a two V two where the board completely changes. It has a totally different map and totally different setup. So they are going to have some 2v2 set up, and then this, obviously, this 1v1. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the solo mode. Uh, and then also, obviously, miniatures and more cards and more items. So, you know, really getting into a lot of that. Okay, round two. Let's see, what do we got here? You can also discard down to five if they're, if your hand's pretty, like, this guy's got a couple of peelings, a couple of the same cards. So he's going to go ahead and drop a few and then draw back up. So hopefully get a little bit better selection here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, oh, these also clear. We're no longer currently roaming. All right, so now we do the farming phase. What do we want to farm again? Do we want to get rid of any cards? Oh, man, this is not the best hand. So I'm going to put these laner cards down because I don't have a lot of hero action here. So I'm going to hold on to those. And I've got two ultimates. They're actually the same card. So I'm going to discard this game card and draw two. I hope I get some better action. Uh, I got more 
More laner cards. Oh, but my white player does advance one more, so she is really jumping up the track on the leveling. Uh, okay, so also this player will look at anything that they want to get rid of. Da, 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 da. Where do you want to farm? We've got a really good set here for red. And got a finally got a yellow or a white player for the support gank. Um you know what? These are both these are both regular. And again, they're the same card, just like this other player. So they're gonna we're gonna get rid of this and draw a card. Aha, I got another character. Sweet. So now we will go to everybody's done farming. We'll lay some stuff down. So I'm gonna look at these laner cards. This last this last hit lets me gain two gold. I've got two of those now. Ambush your opponent is threatened. So if you've got a, a good combo that you feel like you can put on that lane afterwards, you could easily kill a character. Uh, appealing draw a card. The opponent must discard one card from their hand. Uh, warding while this card is in play at the top of your discard pile, consider the next opponent's gank cards tech box to be blank. So you could only play gank cards uh, for their influence. And another appealing. So let's go. Oh, let's do this. This one's gross. I'll, I'll I'll explain that one in a minute. That's a gank card. So we need to do that. Let's do. Uh, let's go here, and then let's go here. Okay, and then we'll do the same real quick over here. We've got a yeah that for sure, and then this for sure. And yeah, okay. So now we're ready to reveal. We have we've laid that down. We're gonna flip these over, and oh, it is in the second round. And the initiative flip. So now the blue player will have initiative and choose which lane they want to go. Now I think in the rules it says that you are allowed at this point, like when we're set up here, you're allowed to um, like look at each other's cards and kind of have a little bit of strategy phase where you can kind of see what you're going to be up against in each lane so that way you can be a little more strategic in how you want to do the initiative so um let's see they're going to go with they're going to do blue first no no they're going to do yellow first so yellow here they have a minion wave you win the tie during the challenge on this lane from the fourth turn on minion waves gain two influence so later we're only in the second turn but uh, it already has a two though, so you, you're already at two. And yellow here, over here, is at one. So, oh yes, we needed to unexhaust those for this round. You don't want to be confused with that from the previous. And then these obviously have moved back up because they're no longer in support. Uh, oh yeah, we, nobody wanted. We'll assume nobody wanted to retreat on any of those lanes. So we're going to do all three. Uh, snake grip. At the end of the challenge, if your opponent's total influence is equal or greater than three, kill an opponent's hero of your choice and gain a gold. So you kind of actually want to lose this lane, and you're going to be able to kill an opponent's uh, hero, and that's really going to set them behind. So that you're already down one. So the, the other player's like, okay, I definitely want to win this lane because I'm already moving up the lane quite nicely, but how much? Ooh. Hmm. So let's see. They might bump up one just to give it some um, to kind of lock it in. They could do a jungle. They have two jungles. Ooh. Oh, do this. This is gross. So I'm gonna jump in with this jungle. And the text on that is. Um, oh wait, oh, we wouldn't do that because there's warding. I played warding over here. This is going to negate that text, so that card is really good because of the text. Uh, they're going to play this jungle instead. So that gives them a three. Three to one. So now we come back over here. We don't do the text again because of warding. And they could lay down a gank, but this is going to let you search the discard pile for a hero associated to this lane and put it into play immediately. So she's probably going to hold on to that. And so we'll just say, lose this. You didn't get lucky enough that they come out really, really strong. This is going to move up. This player would actually take this tower defense token, and that would move over to them. And now, if there's ever any battle here, you just skip back over. So sometimes you might actually give up ground, lose a tower, but then you're going to be able to push it right back over. It just depends on how you want to do that. Uh, okay, so they would also get a green upgrade and a... Uh, nothing. So this goes to discard, and this goes to discard, and now we go to the next lane. Let's say that is going to be blue. So, players first, their action first, 
Gain two gold. Cash money. Need that. We haven't got any item cards going yet, so I'm going to want to get that rolling. Here, I draw a card, and the opponent must discard one. Oh, man. Where was that snake grip a minute ago? Uh, they got to get rid of a card, so they will dump. Not helpful in the combat phase to have to lose cards. So currently, it's one to one. Blue's initiative. Um, they're going to jump on the get greedy. Go ahead and get a two to one going. Uh, here, I would be, let's see, I've got a blue one, so we're going to play this gate card. Hmm. So I've, I, I can use the text on my game because the ward is for their jungle. So I'm going to search my discard pile for a hero card associated to this lane, the blue lane, and put it into play immediately. This card cannot be a copy of one which is already in play. So I'm going to look through my discard, and I know I have blue. I have a blue there. Uh, I have one blue, so we're going to put that one into play. Kapow. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you can pay two gold in order to choose a hero card in your discard pile out to your hand. Man, that would have been super good. Two to two, though. So, um, no options. We could play this jungle card, but we wouldn't get to use the text. So, whew, what are we going to do? And you don't know what the opponent has. You don't get to see like I have where I'm all this perfect information. Um, hmm. Decisions. So, you could let it be a tie, and then it doesn't. I mean, you pass, but they get another turn, so you don't know it's going to end in a tie. Uh, mm, this is tough. Tough, tough, tough. So let's just say they go ahead and they use this and get a lead. Three to two. Passes back to the orange player. They no longer have any cards that they can play because all these are laner cards and have to be played earlier. So they're going to pass and they're going to lose. So they're going to lose this one, and all these cards are going to go to the discard. And the white player uh, for this is going to gain an experience. The uh, blue lane is going to move forward another space. Wow, this player's over here just getting smacked around. And the discard now will do red. So red is up. Uh, her text says, if you have more cards uh, than your opponent in your hand, gain one gold and search in your deck for a support card. Reveal it does not have more cards than this player. Over here we have the ward. It is worth zero. So to them first. Uh, they have peeling. That is not going to help. So their only option at this point is to get greedy again, which would give me another card. But it would give them a 2-0 lead. So they're going to do it. 2-0. Uh, I get a card. Oh, it was not helpful. The, none of these. Also, again, nothing. I got all these cards. Nothing helpful. That is also part of a drawing card game situation. So I'm going to lose. This player is just getting destroyed. <laughs> uh, boom, we're out. Uh, the red player would gain an uh, experience. So that gives you a really good idea of how the game plays. Very tactical, very back and forth. Um, there also, when you get to the fourth round here, um, I'll swap that over so you can see it. In the fourth round, you have these monsters that come out, and you're going to blind bid. Um, from your hand. There's only five. I think there's ten that comes in the game. Uh, you have these monsters. So, like, you get to add this to your hand, and you can play it as a gank. But it also, when you if you win, this like this particular monster gives you a reward of two of your heroes gain three experience points. Whoa. So they're, they're very, very powerful. But you have to discard, um, actually use these monster tokens as uh, bidding. So you'll blind bid, put them in like this. But I want to bid two, or one, or, or four. But you have to discard cards from your hand to pay for that. So if I say three, then I have to discard three cards. So you're going to be putting yourself at a disadvantage for the combat. And that's going to happen at round four and round seven. Um, so, whew, can get risky there. A lot of fun. We didn't really get into these, but they, these are upgradable. So you've got kind of like your uh, that first level that you pay for. It costs a dollar. Or and then... Later, you can pay three gold and upgrade it. So like this one says, pay up to three gold to gain one influence for each gold that you spend. This says, pay up to three gold to gain two influence. So that would be that would be pretty huge. Defense boots. When you retreat from the desert lane, you draw two cards instead of one. Really nice. And then you can upgrade those to the boots of strength. 
And when you retreat from the desert lane, you draw two cards instead of one. Fighter cards gain one influence when played as gain cards. So that might build into your strategy of why you want to do some of those things. So as you can tell, though, you can really you can really optimize your board. Uh, have a lot going on depending on which hero. Because like I said, you can you can only have three. So if you come back later and you're like, ah, I'd really like to have the blue player have their item card, you get half the gold. You can get it refunded, just like in League when you sell something off. And then you'd be able to, if you can pay, you can bring another card in. So one of the, in the combat, you could, one of the other actions you could do is you could play, if I was playing, say, uh, in the red lane, I could, I could activate this and then pay that gold and add that influence to the decision-making process. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the game. So here, here's, my, here's kind of my overall thoughts. If you like Magic the Gathering, if you like highly tactical war games, if you are a big uh, MOBA player and you also like board games, I don't know why you'd be watching this video if you didn't like board games, um, this is a game that you're going to enjoy. You know, I typically don't um, just come out and say that in a lot of my videos, but I think I think those sections of the crowd uh, of they're really really going to enjoy a game that is very similar to playing our online version. I you know I, I'm a mid laner uh, in League. Uh, I like to play Lux as much as I can because I like my little bind pow ultimate combo. It's just a lot of fun uh, to nuke people. Laser beams, pew. Um, but you're going to get a real sense of that here, and with all of the all of the cards, oh my gosh, they have just the content here is sick. Uh, I think you're going to be really happy with your purchase. And I, I've looked over some of the stretch goal upgrades because, again, I'm really excited about this game myself. Um, a lot of miniatures, a lot of cool stuff there, just to really deck it out and, and make it a good experience. Uh, you know, you're going to definitely want that 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 play partner that's also into this. So know that about your game group. And if you've got people that are into that sort of thing, then you guys are going to have a lot of fun in this game. So uh, that's it. Elo Darkness from Reggie Games. They are doing fantastic. There's only like four days left on the campaign. So I'm giving you this video in the home stretch. Go check out the campaign. See if this is something that you want to get involved with. Help us. I say us because I'm going to be, I'm backing and I'm going to be, uh, I want to hit all the stretch goals. Uh, truly Kickstarter style. Uh, let's unlock some stuff and uh, make an awesome game. So Elo Darkness. Thanks guys. This has been James with the Board Game Spotlight. See you later. Bye.